Hello everybody. Let's talk about the gallbladder. So I have posted a previous video on the extrahepatic biliary apparatus where I briefly touched upon the gallbladder. Let's look into the gallbladder in some detail in this video. So the gall gallbladder is located in something called the gallbladder fossa which is here on the base of the liver. So this is the liver from the undersurface. You're looking up at it from the stomach from below and that is how the liver looks like. So that is the gallbladder fossa and the gallbladder fossa opens onto the right end of this area here in the liver that is called the porta hepatis. So the porta hepatis is like the hilum of the liver where structures enter as well as leave. Right, the length of the gallbladder is around 10 centimeters, width is around 3 centimeters, and it has a capacity of 30 to 50 ml. What are the parts of the gallbladder? The gallbladder basically has got three parts you have an upper projected end sac like part called the fundus, a major part of the gallbladder is the body, and towards the part where it continues as the cystic duct, it becomes the neck. Let's see a few features of each of them. The fundus of the gallbladder is that part of the gallbladder which projects beyond the inferior border of the liver. So if you place the liver over there, that is the fundus of the gallbladder which is projecting. And the thing is, the gallbladder fundus is in close association with the tip of the ninth costal cartilage. So if you place the ninth costal cartilage over there, that is where the tip of the uh, that is the tip of the gall uh, of the nine costal cartilage and the gallbladder fundus touches there which is clinically very important. This point is called Murphy's point and we will see why this is important in the coming slides. What about the body? The body is the main uh, space of the gallbladder. It is It has a honeycomb appearance because the mucosa is highly folded and the neck is the narrow end of the gallbladder which then continues as the cystic duct. Sometimes in pathological states, there might be a postromedial dilation in the neck and this is called a Hartmann's pouch. And this Hartmann's pouch may lodge gallbladder stones which might perforate into the first part of the duodenum as is obvious in that picture over there, the first part of the duodenum. And in that case, you end up with something called gallstone ileus because the gallstone which has eroded into the duodenum passes down into the small intestine. So that is a gallstone ileus. Now what is the microstructure? Basically the lumen of the gallbladder is lined by simple columnar epithelium and below that we have the lamina propria. The epithelium lines a mucous membrane which is extensively folded and that is why the gallbladder has a honeycomb appearance. right? And there is a fibromuscular layer which is in the lamina propria and below that we have the subserous loose areolar tissue layer that is over there. And the outermost covering in the case of the fundus you have a serous layer of peritoneum and in the area where the gallbladder is in association with the gallbladder fossa we have the adventitia. Now let's talk about the blood supply. The blood supply as we have seen earlier is basically the cystic artery, the arterial supply. As for the venous drainage we have a cystic vein which is going down into the portal vein as well as small veins via the gallbladder bed which go to the liver and then drain into the hepatic veins. So that's a different sort of venous drainage, it doesn't actually follow the artery as such. The lymphatic drainage is also different. There are two trunks to the gallbladder, one is starting from the medial border or the left border that is over there and the other is starting from the right border and these two trunks are obliquely connected by another trunk which forms an N pattern as you can see in this picture and the trunk on the left side drains into the cystic lymph node of Lund, a content of the Callet triangle which I mentioned in the extrahepatic biliary hepatitis class. I will be linking it below. Please go through that and the trunk on the right side drains into the pericolidocal lymphatics which then go to the pancreaticoduodenal nodes and from there to the pre and paraortic nodes. Apart from that, like the venous drainage, we have from the upper surface of the gallbladder, which is stuck onto the undersurface of the liver, we have certain subcapsular lymphatics which enter the subcapsular vessels of the liver and drain via the hepatic lymph nodes. So that is the lymphatic drainage. Let's talk a bit about the cystic duct. So the cystic duct joins the neck of the gallbladder and then connects to the common 
hepatic duct by an acute angle it connects at an acute angle and once it joins a common hepatic duct the common hepatic duct becomes a common bile duct the inner surface of the cystic duct is highly twisted and the mucosa is folded in a spiral manner and this spiral folding of the mucosa is called the spiral valves of Heister as can be seen in this picture now here right so that somebody the surgeon has actually opened out the cystic duct and you can clearly see the spiral, spiral valves of Heister over there. Let's see a few clinical correlations. So the gallbladder is notorious for a lot of its development anomalies. You can get a lot of abnormal gallbladders such as doubling, double gallbladders. You can have diverticular projections from the walls of the gallbladder. You can have septate gallbladder which may be incomplete or complete septate and you could get even cystic duct variations. Amongst all these variations, the most common one is the Phrygian cap anomaly, which is a form of septate gallbladder, and it is called so because of its similarity to the Phrygian cap. That is another entrance question. A third entrance question that you have that can see is gallstones or cholelithiasis, which is considered as the most common biliary pathology. So that is a gallstone, a lot of gallstones within an open gallbladder as you can see in this image. So the thing is, an 85% of the population has gallstones and it is basically asymptomatic and it is usually diagnosed by accident when you are investigating for something else. So when the gallstones get, cause problems, we get what is called cholecystitis which is either an acute or a chronic inflammation of the bladder of the gallbladder. So when you have an acute cholecystitis, we have something called the Murphy sign. If you remember, we talked about the fundus of the gallbladder which touches the anterior abdominal wall or is, or is in close contact with the tip of the ninth costal cartilage, that is the Murphy's point. And the Murphy sign is a sign that can be elicited by the surgeon in a case of acute gallbladder inflammation or acute cholecystitis where the surgeon places his hand over the ninth costal cartilage, presses down and asks the patient to take a deep inspiration. And suddenly, if the patient is having an acute cholecystitis, there will be a catching pain in the right hypochondrium. Now, this is because when the patient takes a deep breath, the liver is pushed down by the right lung and that in turn pushes down the gallbladder and the fundus of the inflamed, painful gallbladder comes and hits the tip of the ninth costal cartilage where you have the surgeon's hand pressing down and that elicits pain causing the patient to catch himself with pain and that is called the Murphy sign. So that's it about the gallbladder and I hope you like this class. Let's see you again in the next class. Thank you.